it's, it's a Linux PC, so. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, <clears throat> we should set up something. Um, the title of this presentation, as you can see, is uh, Python at the speed of light. So basically, I can try to share some experience uh, when working with uh, Python with, uh, uh, on some projects that I've been uh, so, uh, working so far. <clears throat> Just a little bit uh, about me. So as you can see from the profile, I'm a, a solution architect, and uh, I've been doing that performance uh, troubleshooting and tuning for let's say 20 years now, so that's uh, I would say a lot, a lot of time. And uh, so besides that, uh, system uh, on solution and, uh, and design uh, architecture based mainly on the op Oracle and open source technology. So for the large enterprises, um, so I also. <clears throat> Um, been involved in the business process optimization, like uh, operational research, big data, and so on. Um, what is uh, interesting, so I'm also a member of the European High, uh, High Performance Computing Society, and basically I, ca uh, I come here uh, directly from the conference, because the conference end ended uh, yesterday in the, in the University of uh, Edinburgh in the United Kingdom, and uh, also, I'm an uh, operational research uh, society member, and uh, so I maintain uh, two websites that, are, uh, that seems to be prop popular among the Oracle's uh, community here. Um, so just to explain uh, why uh, exactly <laughs> I chose the Python as, uh, as one of my favorite uh, languages. Um, uh, so I've been involved on many projects. Um, around and uh, uh, I can clearly see that uh, basically the large enterprises are always struggling with uh, you know uh, uh, to react fast uh, on the market change on uh, on the, um, uh, so every uh, a lot of things are going on around and and uh, basically um, on a lot of um, uh, projects uh, um, um, uh, I've been testify how the uh, <clears throat> business um, let's say uh, uh, pressuring uh, to maintain the budget and time, and uh, and um, usually uh, in reality those uh, um, <clears throat> projects where I've been involved uh, uh, for different reasons. So it's um, it was not easy to maintain all those constraints. And uh, uh, besides that, on the large enterprises there are also a huge uh, maintenance cost involved with whatever software you. Uh, you are involved I mean, uh, the enterprise software, and also the upgrade cost is also huge, extremely huge. So that's uh, uh, that, um, let's, let's say, reality what, I, uh, what I've been uh, testifying so far. And um, uh, for me, Python is, uh, you know, yeah, easy language to, to get started. Yesterday, I've, um, so I've heard some joke about the Python that uh, uh, goes like, uh, if you close your eyes and then uh, just uh, type anything on your keyboard and then save that file, you have a good chance that you will get a uh, runnable Python code. So it uh, basically means that, uh, <clears throat> yes, it's easy to start, but the library is uh, still uh, huge. and. Uh, uh, I will just um, short, briefly uh, go through those uh, facts that you already know that uh, how code is uh, usable and uh, how code is uh, clean and readable and everything. But uh, this is uh, what you can observe on a large project because the, uh, the Python's ability to easy maintain the code. So when you uh, jump in in some project, so you will uh, basically uh, become very productive uh, in a short period of time, which is not the case with some other languages, let's, uh, let's say like that. And uh, um, also Python is, of course, uh, platform independent. You already know that. Batteries included approach. There are uh, about 170,000 projects uh, based on um, uh, that, that you can uh, basically uh, build your application on top of that. That guarantees that you will definitely never come uh, start uh, anything from the scratch. And uh, also, it's a good as a glue language. Uh, allows you allows you to concentrate on the problem, and um, also it's easy to debug and. Uh, and so, um, it's a, of course interpreted language. That's the reason why it's uh, slow. Let's say like that. Uh, but um, uh, for example, uh, it also means that you don't need to compile any. Uh, that you don't need to compile code, which means that you won't spend uh, time on the compilation of the code. Which basically is one of the reasons uh, why, um, let's say. Um, 
uh, Google invented the Golang language because uh, because uh, it spends a lot of time by compiling the C code. Um, so I found some articles that the Python is actually the uh, the, the development with the Python is up to 36 times uh, so faster than with some other languages, and also it's a language of choice for data science and um, and so on. Uh, Python is as well open source language, but as uh, I assume you already know that um, <clears throat> there are some problems with the Python. Um, what I uh, have found so far, that's uh, first of all that incompatib incompatibility between the two main branches uh, of Python 2 and Python 3. So, but um, you will see later how we can uh, address that uh, uh, point. Also, it's uh, of course uh, slow, execution time is uh, very slow because it's uh, interpreted and there is also global interpreted lock which uh, prevents you to scaling to use the multi-cores on the, on the single um, processor, uh, on, uh, on the multiple uh, processor, sorry. So um, also there is a, uh, uh, there, there are uh, good chances that you will be hit it by some, um, uh, by some um, <coughs> uh, dependency, uh, broken dependency if you are using a Python because um, besides the standard library, people are usually using the external library that are, not, that are outside of the Python ecosystem. And because of that uh, fast rate of uh, changing the packages, so you uh, have a good chance uh, you know, that something in that chain will be, uh, will be broken. Also, there are many myths uh, surrounding the Python language. And because of those myths, um, I would say that um, you know, uh, business side don't like, let's say, to, to try or to use uh, more intensively Python in their enterprises. Um, <clears throat> some of the uh, solutions, let's say, with in incompatibility one, it's, um, it's uh, easy because uh, there are just uh, eight months, so uh, till the Python 2 will be uh, basically, uh, till the end of the life of the Python 2. So that's, uh, if you have to do something, then you will of course choose the Python 3, probably. But um, uh, besides that, uh, broken dependency, which is another issue with the Python, can be easily, uh, uh, it is uh, solvable by using just the application, uh, application virtualization in Python because you have a PIP environment, virtual environment conda, uh, which allows you to create the uh, completely isolated Python environment, which has nothing to do with the default interpreter that comes with uh, Linux, and uh, so you have a good chance uh, to solve all those because of the uh, uh, PIP environment and conda, they are all uh, not only the virtual in, uh, virtualization, uh, uh, Python virtualization, uh, packages, but they are also maintaining the dependency chain among the packages. So just a couple, um, I will go fast uh, uh, through uh, <coughs> these uh, points regarding the myths. So you can see that Python is currently the number three of uh, in the language popularity index uh, uh, that uh, is maintained by uh, Tayobe. Uh, and we have also PyPal, where the Python is on the number one uh, position among the most popular. Of course, the statistics is not the same, uh, which has been used, but if you compare this, uh, uh, those two, so the Python is uh, all the time uh, on the top. Um, <clears throat> stack overflow, uh, so you can see here also that uh, if you remove this uh, SQL and HTML, so according to stack overflow, Python is also on the uh, among the general, let's say, uh, languages on the position number one. And um, uh, <clears throat> also stack overflow, you can see that uh, that the uh, Python uh, uh, is growing all the time. So basically, uh, this curve here, so it's all, all, all the time up. So it means that the uh, community is uh, really, um, uh, how can I say, uh, they are just uh, adapting and uh, working with Python more and more. So um, this is a slide that comes from the uh, as an introductory to the main topic, so uh, it comes from the uh, code platoon. So I have a written permission to publish it. So um, it's uh, based on the major uh, job portals. So and as you can see that uh, uh, when you when you compare the average salary and job posting, so uh, only Java has um, more uh, jobs on those uh, portals uh, than the Python. And uh, but the salary for the Python engineers are. Um, uh, better so they can earn more than, uh, for example, Java. So that is the current situation. 
um, also some of the users of Python, so this is also what you probably know, so some of them are really large, like uh, Intel or NVIDIA or so on. Um, and uh, definitely this is the main topic, so uh, based on the what I've been doing so far with uh, Python and the Oracle. Basically, I combined, uh, I combined um, most of the time those two because on the project where I've been involved. So uh, Python comes to be very fast, but uh, this is also very interesting <laughs> that, uh, so to up to now, there are uh, probably 2,000 and 300 uh, <laughs> programming languages, but uh, only three of them uh, have been used uh, inside the high performance computing, uh, let's say, um, uh, task and uh, Python is uh, the latest uh, language which joins uh, that uh, uh, that uh, society. So that um, task. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, for the uh, performance tuning with the Python. So first, uh, what uh, uh, what I've been doing is. Uh, uh, basically, uh, to uh, try to understand uh, where I lo I've lost time in the code, so that's a logical approach. So, and uh, in this uh, case, you can see that. Uh, uh, so this is the, just the performance graph, but uh, I zoom it uh, here. So uh, this is tested with uh, Oracle database, and um, so we are talking here about so let's say 100 million or something like that uh, uh, data. So um, <clears throat> this is the name of my just uh, program, but uh, almost uh, 82 percentage of the code has been spent on the CX Oracle cursor, so fetch all. So basically what does it mean? So CX Oracle is JDBC, so just in a Python world. And uh, the line, the cursor is uh, that one. So in this line, I spent uh, 80, 82 percentage of the time. So uh, why I call it um, uh, data intensive task? Because here we have just uh, the IO and the network which has been involved in that. And um, <clears throat> If you compare that with the Java code, so basically here uh, I put the same array size, which means that from the Oracle side it has to be identical, and also from the from the uh, application side it has to be identical. So uh, here I set uh, the cursor to be identical one, and uh, you can see here. So in this example, this is a Python code where I'm, I'm using that uh, CX Oracle driver, and here we have uh, Oracle JDBC, for example. Uh, the timing is uh, almost the same. So Python is in the uh, in my results 10 percent faster, but uh, basically um, I would say that uh, the, the speed of uh, a data intensive task for the Oracle, for the uh, Python and the Java is uh, probably the same. So there, there is no uh, advantage, let's say, in this case of, of using some other language that, uh, that uh, than a Python when we are talking about the uh, data intensive code. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, another example. Um, basically, uh, I, I've been asked just to provide, let's say, uh, some decision on one project before. So, uh, what we should use as, uh, let's say, uh, for some kind of a batch processing as a language. So, uh, this is a CPU intensive task. As we can see, uh, we have just a simple for loop. This is a C code, so nothing special here. And, um, but I have to provide the answer. Because the answer, I, when I run the same on the Python, so here I get 7.6 seconds, which is about um, 28 times slower or 3,000 times slower when I, uh, let's say, uh, put all those switches in, uh, in a compiled uh, C code. So basically, uh, it's clear that Python is uh, way too slow comparing for the CPU intensive task. So that's uh, that's. Uh, <clears throat> Understandable because the Python is interpreted, but uh, here this is the Python paradox. Although it's uh, you know such a slow, basically it has been used for machine learning and similar tasks. And for those tasks, you of course need to have a, a very efficient language. And uh, this comes to basically the uh, uh, the two reasons of the bottlenecks, as I mentioned before. Uh, before, so one of them is of course the single thread it is uh, slow because it's interpreted, and we have we cannot uh, scale up because we have uh, we are affected by global interpreter lock. But 
uh, in the history, there are many attempts to address those, uh, let's say, Python's uh, slowness. Uh, so there are several pages, but I just chose a couple of them. Let's say this one, you can uh, transform the, you can write a Fortran function, then generate the uh, C type, and then implement that in a Python. There is a PyPy, which is a just-in-time compiler, which provides a good performance, but it's incomp incompatible with, let's say, TensorFlow and all other libraries, external libraries uh, that have written in a C language, for example. Cyton, Cyton is uh, used uh, of, uh, the most of uh, those uh, mentioned uh, here attempts, but uh, with a Cyton you need basically to program with uh, two languages. So you have a, you have a Python, you have a C, so that's uh, basically mixed uh, language programming. Um, so, um, <clears throat> first, um, to tune the code in a Python, you should try to use what is uh, available already. So, in this case, uh, uh, in this case, this is uh, just a pure Python, so without anything else. And uh, we can uh, see that, uh, let's say, that uh, generators and we have a list comprehension. So, in this case, uh, we have a list comprehensions for uh, some kind of the range, and we can see that the elapsed time is uh, 41 seconds. And uh, memory use is almost 38 gigabytes. So it's a huge memory use. And this is the basically from the Linux, uh, just the graph of the memory usage, what you, what you can see here. Uh, the same thing, so the poor, pure Python, so-called, we have the same elapsed time here. So it's even half seconds less. But the memory has been, you know, uh, it's not uh, 38 gigabytes, it's uh, uh, 800 megabytes. From those 800 megabytes, in reality, the code itself uh, takes just uh, maybe a kilobyte or so because uh, <clears throat> because much of the memory. Uh, this is also the uh, Python virtual machine that is uh, that is included. So this is just a pure Python, which can uh, help you definitely with uh, with your code. Another example is uh, um, also within the, the core Python is um, let's say this is a serial uh, code that uh, that we have just one uh, for loops and just a simple sleep command, 10 seconds, do nothing. And basically, of course, that is uh, 10, 10 times, uh, 10 times 10, it's uh, 100 seconds. Uh, uh, if um, you have a case that you can uh, up, uh, that you can apply it, you can, for example, use the sub process uh, like uh, in this case, where I just uh, do the same for loop and then trigger out the uh, uh, that uh, sleep uh, procedure uh, uh, out of the main process into, into the sub-process, and of course you will get 10 times less time, but you will get uh, new sub-processes, as you can see here, for example. Um, uh, also, there are many other uh, so possibilities within the Python st standard library that you can use, like, uh, like uh, for example, uh, queuing, multiprocessing, uh, concurrent packages. And I will just mention, um, uh, ju just mentioned one of them. So, for example, uh, in this, uh, this is a CPU intensive task as well. So basically, we are fine with the network and the, and the I/O. So it's, um, it should be clear that uh, there are no advantages of any other languages. So you cannot get. I mean, uh, you will get what you will get. So you will get the same performances with uh, any any other languages. But uh, this is the factorization example, which is uh, basically CPU intensive uh, again, and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it has some for loop and it has some maths inside, uh, uh, like um, uh, like the mod uh, function, and so on. And um, uh, the other example is using also from the standard library uh, concurrent uh, package, uh, where I've been using just uh, workers uh, for workers here. And uh, the the results of that is, of course, that I have uh, four times better performance because uh, I'm, uh, and I'm still within the core, uh, the pure Python. Mm, I, I assume that uh, you've heard about the number because this is a, so, you know, uh, <clears throat> when someone uh, asked me about the uh, silver bullet, okay, yeah, so the silver bullet is uh, basically, uh, uh, if there is, if that uh, thing exists, then it will be the number. Number is basically just in time compiler, but but what it allows you to just uh, put one decorator here, so no Python is equal to, and then uh, you will get, as you can see, uh, much of the performance improvement because we are on the one seconds. So this is uh, just the picture of how number is working, but in basically it's just uh, uh, calling the um, uh, LLVM uh, API call so that you can. Uh, uh, 
uh, that you can get the C code, which is uh, which will be much faster. And uh, behind that uh, Namba project is uh, there are many companies like, uh, as you can see, Intel, uh, Nvidia, Anaconda. So uh, basically, this is the. Um, um, this is the main way how you can improve uh, the Python code to become uh, very, very fast. Um, <clears throat> Uh, also, uh, you shouldn't overlook uh, if something already exists. So, for example, uh, this is the factorization example, but uh, here uh, I'm just using the pure uh, algorithm from the Python uh, standard library, and uh, basically you can get uh, much, much uh, improvement because the in the uh, because of uh, using applying that uh, algorithm here, as you can see, but. Um, <clears throat> Here is another example. For example, uh, the array multiplication. Array multiplication, um, in this case, so I'm just uh, multiplying that uh, array with some, let's say, scalar value, and it takes almost uh, three and a half minutes. So this is a usual, let's say, um, approach when you, when you have some data science task. And um, <clears throat> by using uh, just the NumPy, so the NumPy is um, another package from the Python ecosystem. So it's uh, basically the, there are two types. So uh, we have uh, some of the packages are written in Python, some of them are written in the in a C. The NumPy is written in a C, so we we have just a six seconds instead of a three and a half minutes because I do the same thing uh, just in the NumPy. Um, but um, this is not uh, the end. Um, so till now, I've been um, talking about the standard Python um, uh, standard Python interpreter, but there are another there are other interpreters as well. So one of them is uh, Anaconda, but there are also others. Uh, and uh, uh, here I just switch the distribution of Python, so um, the same uh, the same code, uh, and I still get the 16% better performance. Why is that? Because the the package NumPy is not the same. So only the name is the same, but the package behind the scene is not the same. It, it uses the different uh, other packages and it's uh, tuned, basically. So that's the reason uh, that <clears throat> why you can, just by switching from one uh, interpreter to the other one, you can uh, get the performance improvement. And here, for example, uh, if you combine, let's say, the Namba with uh, NumPy, uh, so which means um, I just added this uh, uh, this part of the code, no Python is equal to true, parallel is equal to true. So basically, I come to the 0 0.14 seconds, which is uh, 1,345 times better. Um, just by doing one line, so that's a decorator here. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a, I would say, a huge improvement from the, from the three and a half minute that we had uh, ago. Now we are on the 0 0.40 seconds. But we can do much more. Uh, so in this example, uh, everything is the same. Uh, the only difference is uh, the difference is that uh, I've been using CUDA. So I have, um, uh, in this case, just one uh, NVIDIA uh, card. I can have, let's say, two or three. But uh, just, uh, and this is uh, just the moderate uh, card. So it's not the high end. It's uh, let's say some somewhere in the in the middle. So now we have a, a one order of magnitude improvement. So instead of uh, three and a half minutes, now we are talking about 0 0.099 seconds. But here um, the bottleneck are some, something else. So the translating the memory and so on. But uh, here we are definitely getting the, <clears throat> the I would say um, excellent performance. Um, example from the beginning, uh, this is uh, uh, interesting, so uh, uh, I will show you the C code, just the simple for loop, and just the applying this, uh, um, uh, this uh, number, uh, 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 number compiler here, basically I'm come to the same speed as, uh, as a C code here, as you can see, uh, basically from the, from the timings, so that is the uh, first example. And um, uh, the last, uh, basically, question uh, is about the um, uh, scaling out. So uh, what are you trying to do? For example, on this machine, I wanted to, for some data, uh, let's say, data science task, I wanted to, yes, I'm, uh, 
definition. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to, let's say, um, um, uh, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, to make some um, uh, analysis based on the 100 or 1 billion uh, records from the database. So, and um, whatever I do within the Python, so uh, I get, uh, I've got this, and this is basically the time when the out of memory uh, uh, killer starts to killing my uh, application because I run out of the memory and uh, run out of the swap space. And uh, so I cannot analyze uh, those, uh, those data. Um, but there are um, very simple solutions. There are at least 10, 20, 30 uh, different projects in a Python where you can basically uh, do a clustering. So by doing the clustering, so that there is a way MPI does. Uh, here I created the eight node cluster within my machine here. And uh, you can see the CPU consumption memory and so on. And um, basically with uh, I can do the uh, machine learning task for the 100 million, so with, uh, with also eight workers, so which means the uh, eight node cluster. Um, uh, so I can do that uh, within uh, five minutes. So basically, um, I, uh, I don't, didn't have the out of memory killer. I didn't have uh, anything else. So, and I can scale out. So it's so simple to, I mean, create the clustering in the Python that's, it's really incredible. So, uh, and there are so many options that you can uh, explore here because, uh, uh, <clears throat> because uh, I believe that uh, the point is to do the job, not to, uh, uh, not to um, just um, strangle around uh, some kind of limitations. And uh, also there are another very interesting project where you can basically combine whatever I said till now, so which means the clustering. Uh, in this uh, example, I believe it's, uh, we are talking about a Dask cluster, but you can, for example, combine a Dask with, uh, let's say, um, uh, let's say uh, some uh, of the newer uh, NVIDIA packages like, uh, like um, uh, a CUDA version of, uh, of a Pandas framework. Uh, where you can get uh, basically the clustering of the uh, GPU cards. So you can have, let's say, 10 nodes, uh, and each node can have, let's say, one, two, or three uh, 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 GPU cards. Uh, uh, so basically, you are getting the massive power that you can use uh, to, let's say, uh, <clears throat> Uh, do some calculation stuff and so on. Uh, Python, uh, there are also packages where you can connect a Python with a yarn, so to uh, get the direct co connection with uh, big data engines and uh, basically uh, this is, um, I would say, <laughs> definitely this, uh, this scaling out is uh, solving a lot of issues. So you can combine everything, so which means the number, GPUs, whatever you have with uh, scaling out and, and the main principle here is uh, you, need, uh, you need to get out from the Python as uh, soon as possible to j just get rid of all the limitations that Python has. So that's in one sentence. And uh, uh, but uh, the point is that uh, you can still, I mean, uh, have an excellent debugger, a reasonable, a reasonable code, and you don't need to do a lot of. Uh, uh, you don't need to do much because you just uh, um, uh, you just uh, need to add a decorator in a in a if you need to use uh, let's say the uh, the NumPy compiler or you need let's say and also it's very easy to, to program the uh, GPU kernels uh, if you want to use a Python. So it's uh, really, uh, I would say, pretty easy to do that. So that's, uh, that's all from me. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, there are no demos because <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I mean, I can start something, but um, yeah. OK. Thanks. After the lunch, thanks.